Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. So we are back once again from Foss Tiles. And today we have another wonderful photographer going to share his experience with bird photography, his techniques, his tips, his exciting moments in the world. And uh, he is a UX UI designer. He is based in Bangalore. And he started his passion with a school trip, or he realized his passion for nature and photography with the school trip we had, I think he had in 10 years ago. And, you know, certain incidents which happens in our life at some point can change a lot of things in our life. I think that's what we are seeing in our today's guest, how a school trip change his interest, change his uh, attitude towards life and uh, give him a new meaning or a new perspective to be closer to nature. This is all what we are going to discuss today with our guest today is Skanda. Let me invite him to join us. Hi Skanda, how are you? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? Hi Very all. Good. So, um, we would like to know how do you got into this and what inspired you? Yeah, we have a small idea as you mentioned that you know you got into a school trip which led to this new passion. So that journey from the beginning till now is going to be our topic for the day and you can just go ahead and start with it. So uh, as you just mentioned, uh... It all started from uh, you know a school trip. Uh, I think I was in fifth or sixth standard when uh, there was a school excursion to Banargata, which is close to Bangalore. Okay. So uh, the the naturalist over there, uh, I don't remember his name, but <laughs> yeah, he, he showed me a few birds uh, with his binoculars, and uh, that kind of got me interested. And and then uh, further on, you know. Uh, in my high school, uh, there was a thing called Green Brigade, which was all about the nature, uh, you know, reduce, reuse, don't use plastic and all of that. So that kind of, you know, uh, gave me that foundation for uh, liking and loving nature. And uh, I think that's where it started. And uh, photography came in a little later when uh, there was all these school trips uh, in high school. I, I had this small, uh, camera that has real uh, the film okay. it, it's like the it, it's the consumer camera not an SLR okay so I, I I started shooting with that and then uh, uh, I think when I came to 10th I got a small point and shoot uh-huh and maybe two three years later on I got my first DSLR uh, that was a d500 uh -huh. with the kit lens. So okay. uh, I, I started with a D500. Uh -huh. uh, I shot I shot that for a few years. Uh -huh. I think uh, three four years later, uh, once I came into college, I started shooting different events in college. So yeah. that kind of gave, gave me some money to you know bring you know, more lenses into my bag. Uh, got a 55 200. So okay. 55 200 is my first uh, birding lens. Okay. Uh, there is there is a lake uh, uh, near uh, Malishram, Sanki Tank in uh -huh. Bangalore. So okay. That is where I started shooting birds. Uh, so small common birds, kingfishers, common cormorants, birds like that. Okay. Uh, during the same time, uh, Karnataka Forest Department and Jungle Lodges had a volunteer training program. Uh -huh. so I, I, I spent about seven days uh, in 2013 uh, uh -huh. in Bollywood, uh, learning about tigers, leopards, birds, insects, spiders. And uh, all this training was uh, done uh, to help forest department whenever they, need, they needed uh, volunteers. Great. So that was uh, where things actually became a little more serious. Uh -huh. uh, at that point of time, I, I was more exposed to uh, different habitats. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I mean, I, I can maybe put it like this. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, till that time, I I was going around in and around Bangalore. Mm-hmm. So the group of friends that I made there gave me the opportunity to explore further away. I I was okay. still in college and I couldn't go out much. Mm-hmm. But that group of friends gave me that opportunity to go further away, explore different habitats, okay. and also understand better about the habitats in and around Bali. So, good. so just after college, as I uh, took up my first job, mm-hmm. this job also plays uh, a, a key role in terms of photography because this was all about photography. This job was about okay. So I I made a uh, 360 degree virtual tours of uh, archaeological sites of India, Hampi, Madhavi, yeah. places like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that involved a lot of travel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can say I've traveled all all the states of South India in that one year period. That's wonderful. And uh, mm-hmm. made a lot of uh, 360 uh, 360 degree virtual tours. Mm-hmm. Uh, that also, you know, improved my photography skill, my post processing. Mm-hmm. I mean, that improved vastly there. And uh, I think then, uh, 16, 17, 18, uh, I didn't do much. Mm-hmm. And then uh, once I'm in this new company that I work for now, Tone Tag, okay. so this gave gave me a little bit of more flexibility where uh, I could uh, go out and explore more. Mm-hmm. when covid happened uh, from home so i, I mean yeah, yeah. yeah. A, a lot of bad things happened but uh, for me i think uh, it kind of helped me go out a little more okay uh, i explored nearby areas and uh, made some good images during oh, this uh, great so, how about this that that's a beautiful day ni i think uh, you know this covid time kind of give different people different opportunities i know it it's in general it's a hard time but then a lot of people use it in a positive way as well I'm so happy to see that it gives you know people to get more close to nature rather than a lot of crap so that way it's 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 very important for all of us to take things slightly slowly and take care a little more when it comes to nature yes so the the key here as photographers is uh, you need to of course see go out and see birds but also try and protect what we have so that you know, we don't have to show the next generation them in photos we can actually show them in in real life yes i totally agree how about you starting with your presentation if you can just go to the presentation screen yes and yeah if you can keep it full screen yes perfect uh so yeah i'm just adding it to the screen yeah wow that's a beauty so this is uh something i shot uh, you know, just uh, five six months ago mm-hmm. uh, this was in july july of 2021 okay uh, very close very close to bangalore and uh, this is a this is a very cute raptor this is a red neck falcon mm-hmm. it, it's a small raptor it's not okay. very big and uh, uh, falcons in general are uh, brave they allow you close so Oh okay. this was uh, shot about 20 25 feet away. Oh that's great. So everyone uh, you know asks this question first what do you shoot with? Yes. So this is how I have evolved. I okay. started with a D5000. Uh-huh. I shot a D7000 for a very long time. Uh, uh-huh. 5 6 years. I shot a D7000. Mm-hmm. I used a D5, a D500 from 2018 till uh, almost one month ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, uh, D, I got a D5 in last April, uh, okay. 2021 April. I got myself a D5. Mm-hmm. Uh, lenses. Uh, I mean, I I started with the D5000 uh, and uh, 1855. in college i picked up uh, 55 200 and the 50 mm okay i used to rent the 70 300 and the 300 f4 a lot before mm-hmm. i 
purchased the 300 ml yeah uh, 1116 is something i picked up when i was shooting uh, the monuments mm -hmm. and i still have that lens i use it uh, rarely <laughs> these days okay uh, and uh, after uh, you know the covid uh, lockdown and uh, once things opened up i picked up a 600 i think good so uh, uh since i shoot in and around bangalore karnataka mm -hmm. i thought I'd, uh, start off with the karnataka state road oh, I this <laughs> indian road yeah uh, Indian border is uh, a very color colorful bird. Um, yeah. This bird, uh, you know, uh, it's a very easy to get bird, but uh, yeah. to get them right is slightly challenging. Yeah. So this is another uh, Indian border just taking off. Yeah. So this image. Uh, uh, I, I didn't realize that this is a good image for a very long time. <laughs> uh, when I posted this on Instagram, uh, this image uh, was picked up by a lot of different pages. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it is still picked up now. Uh, this is almost eight, nine months after I have posted this. So, uh, it's a beautiful word and beautiful action. Uh, this is, it's european cousin the european roller this is yeah. a bird uh, i have uh, wanted to see for a very long time mm -hmm. uh, i first came to know about this bird uh, sometime in 2013 or 14. Mm -hmm. i was only able to shoot this last year so uh, <laughs> very long wait i got this bird mm -hmm. uh, i got this bird in a few different poses i'm just uh, sharing a couple of them okay this is where it is regurgitating. After it has consumed, it is trying to you know put out what it doesn't want. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Indian hoopoe. Mm -hmm. uh, very beautiful bird. Uh, it, it opens its crest uh, sometimes. Yeah. It it opens like a fan. Mm. Uh, the lantana flower in the background kind of adds to this image, and that's yeah. why it's here. <laughs> Beautiful. This is another very common bird, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of images uh, of this bird is uh, you know when people are standing or shooting from their cars or you know, not at eye, eye level. So yeah. it, it looks uh, you know kind of squashed and uh, not not really interesting. But when you come down to eye level, this is a very interesting bird. Mm -hmm. This is uh, a tricolor munia. Mm -hmm. This again was shot last year. Uh, mm -hmm. Nothing more I can say about this. I mean, <laughs> now, how do you approach small birds? Um, do you have any specific techniques? Because you know the bigger birds usually are much more easier. And the smaller the bird is, it's quite. Um, you know, they are more scared about human presence. So, do you have any specific techniques? Uh, yes, I mean, uh, so I I started with a fifty five two hundred lens. Mm -hmm. So when I started with that lens, uh, uh, my maximum reach was two hundred mm. So I yeah. had to physically get closer. So yeah. a lot of trial and error method back when I started mm -hmm. uh, approaching the bird uh, very slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to get as much cover as possible from within the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how I started. That's how. That's what I followed, able to take. So now that I have a longer lens, uh, I can. I don't have to get that close. Mm -hmm. But the idea is uh, you know, to get as close as to the bird without disturbing it, so that you get a good uh, bird photo. Mm -hmm. and the bird, uh, good details on the bird and the background. Okay. So uh, as you get closer to the subject, the distance of, of the bird from the background increases, mm -hmm. which uh, separates the bird from in the photograph. Yeah. Okay. So this is a red munia. Mm -hmm. So uh, interesting st uh, story with this is mm -hmm. uh, 
there was a, a, a perch right next to where it is sitting right now in this photograph and the bird the bird was uh, coming back to that perch regularly but in this instance it chose to sit on the grass blades so this kind of made the entire photo interesting that entire experience of shooting the bird also you know, uh, yeah. it used to sit on the perch and in this occasion it's decided to sit on the grass blades that's beautiful so this is an Indian scope sound. Mm -hmm. uh, owls are very interesting. They uh, they generally uh, you know, prefer to uh, sit uh, perch in areas that are not easily seen. But this was one instance when it came out and sat in the open. So the pelican shot in uh, Hebal Lake. This is an old image. Okay. This is uh, one of the first images with my uh, 55 200. Uh, wow. It was a very special image to me. Uh, also, because I had to wait almost three to four hours for this bird to come out. I knew the bird is there. And I okay. knew the On that day, I just sat there, waited for three to four hours, and I, I got lucky, I guess. That's a beautiful one. And with uh, with uh, you know that short lens, it's it's even more interesting. So uh, this is uh, just outside uh, uh, Bangalore. Mm -hmm. This was back in uh, 2014, uh, 2015, I think. Okay. Uh, so so I shot this after writing my exams. <laughs> I finished my exams <laughs> and went to this place. I shot this part. So uh, there are actually three uh, birds in this photo. Uh, the third bird is sitting on the right okay. of the frame. On the right of the frame, you can uh, see a oh, bit of the top. Great. So these are. Th this is actually a nesting site. Mm -hmm. uh, this was shot with a torch, uh, not a flashlight. Okay. And. Uh, uh, a few days later, uh, it moved from this place. So, uh, I mean, it was right next to the road. So, uh, I'm not sure if uh, three, four of us photographed. I'm not sure whether our photography, uh, you know, disturbed this bird or whether it was the road, the traffic. So, that is a thing that we need to find out. When was this? I mean, when? Uh, this, this was uh, back in uh, 2014, uh, November. And you haven't managed to spot where they moved after this. Yes, uh, this uh, it it moved about uh, 20, 25 uh, feet uh, into another tree, okay. a slightly higher higher okay. in the tree. Uh, this is uh, a blue-tailed beater, uh, close mm -hmm. up of it. Uh, you can I don't know if uh, the video shows all the details of the dragonfly's wing. Yet it is. Yeah. So this is another. Uh, so all these birds uh, all, are birds that we see in and around Bangalore uh, very, very easily. OK. Uh, uh, on the right, we have uh, white-throated kingfisher. On the left, we have uh, Egyptian vulture. OK. So I think uh, this is a good example to show how the season varies and uh, how the entire environment around the bird changes with the season. Mm. So the Egyptian vulture is shot somewhere, uh, I think, uh, 2016, 2017 uh, uh, winter, uh, just after winter, uh, March, April time, where everything is dry. OK. Uh, the Kingfisher is a re recent shot of the from the same location. Okay. But uh, this, this was shot somewhere in uh, July or August. OK. So the background, the colors in the background, everything is changing. Oh, so I think I, I think we can uh, look. You know, uh, if we decide to go to one uh, place and uh, visit that place regularly, okay, we can uh, get different kind of uh, photographs, maybe of the same species. Uh huh. From from the same location. Okay. So uh, 
Uh, I'm just uh, switching over to birds of central Karnataka. Beautiful. So all of this that I showed was in and around Bangalore. Uh -huh. so, since I've explored parts of central Karnataka, I thought I would uh, show them separately. Okay. Uh, birds of central Karnataka. Central Karnataka is uh, you know kind of unique. It it has uh, you know shrub forest. It, it has grassland habitat. It has uh, dry deciduous forests. Okay. Also, a, a lot of lakes. So, mm -hmm. It is uh, unexplored territory that you know uh, can be explored and uh, you know made, made uh, can can be uh, explored in a way where you know you can actually have a new species uh, record records for the places. Okay. So, uh, for example, there is a lake uh, in uh, uh, near Gadag mm -hmm. where. We have, we have uh, uh, red crested poacher sighting. We had a red crested poacher sighting, uh -huh. which 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 is not uh, you know, which is not a common bird for Karnataka. And I'm, I'm not quite sure if uh, you know that sighting is. Uh, I mean, people have sighted it before. Mm -hmm. Central Karnataka is relatively unexplored. That's what I'm uh, trying to say. Oh, okay, got it. So yeah. this is a, a painted uh, francolin. Beautiful. Uh, male and female uh, painted spur form. Mm -hmm. Male on the left. Uh, female on the right. On the right. Yeah. Uh, this is a rock uh, bush quail. Okay. Uh, painted uh, sand grouse. Lovely. This is uh, Indian Eagle Owl. Uh, this is the photo that was created, uh, used to create the poster. Wow. So uh, th this bird, uh, this sighting is uh, something uh, you know, unique. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of uh, shows us the grassland habitat. It sh shows the rocky habitat. Uh, and this, this is almost uh, six. Six six fifteen uh, ish time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it shows the diurnal uh, nature of the bird as well, uh, active during the day yeah. and the day. So this is the same bird a few minutes earlier. Lovely. This is uh, another uh, very uh, special and a uh, very hard to find bird. Uh, Yellow throated bulbul. Mm -hmm. uh, this mm, there, there are a few places where you see this bird, but okay. it is very the numbers are very very few. So again, uh, one of the reasons why we need to protect these areas. Uh, is it endangered or anything like that? Yes, this this is endangered. Yes. So this is from Gadag. Uh, the, there is a lake called Magadi, mm -hmm. or so the bar-headed geese, uh, just flying in in the morning. Mm -hmm. So if, if you go to this lake, uh, say about uh, before six, uh, before eight thirty, you wouldn't mm -hmm. see one single bird there. Okay. One one single bar-headed geese, but uh -huh. between uh, eight thirty and nine thirty, uh, uh -huh. so, sometime in December, you will find mm -hmm. about eight to nine thousand of these birds coming into the lake wow so uh, there are uh, i mean uh, i am i was not that lucky but there are photographs of uh, the uh, thousands Stop. of birds in one frame <laughs> i'm sure you will have your days soon <laughs> uh, this is another uh, bird from central karnataka i mean this this is not just from central karnataka this is all over uh, okay. Short toed sneak eagle, but uh, this is a nesting site that uh, we had uh, got. And, uh, uh, this is uh, this is the uh, young uh, bird in the nest. Mm -hmm. So is this was there... shot at a distance, mm -hmm. and uh, we did not uh, disturb the bird. 
I was about to ask you because I, my, you keep mentioning about the nesting places. So whenever you are traveling to or approaching a nesting area, what are the precautions you usually take to make sure that the bird is disturbed? Uh, approach approach uh, how you would approach any other bird. Mm -hmm. Keep but is there any double, double distance. Yeah, I mean that was the question. I mean, it, is there? Do you do anything in specific just because it is a nesting site to make sure or to make double sure that the bird is not? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the bird is more important than the photograph. So yes we have to make sure that we are not uh, disturbing the bird. Yeah. So with, you know, the crop body uh, 600 and the teleconverter, that, that range is uh, good enough and we can also crop in a lot. So Yeah. Great. Thank you. So Western Guards is a very happy place for me. Uh, so. mm -hmm. Uh, guards are uh, something that refreshes my mind. I mean, anytime I feel down, I want to just run to the guards. Okay. Uh, since uh, you're from Canada, I'm sure you would also feel that. Oh, I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is a Palani laughing thrush. This I just made this image in January this year. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Uh, Malabar uh, parakeet. So uh, birds of Western Guards are not easy to shoot. Yeah. We generally find them like this. Yeah. The, this is a Nilgiri laughing thrush. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, uh, I forgot the name. No. Uh, Kashmiri flycatcher. Yes. OK. Uh, this is uh, Malabar pied hornbill. Yeah. This is a Sholakili or a white bellied blue robin. Uh, so, this is how generally we find the birds in Western Guards. But uh, with the right amount of effort, uh, knowing the bird, understanding their behavior, we can make shots like this as well. So okay. We just have to wait in a place, wait for, wait for the bird to approach us. Wait, yeah. I mean, uh, shooting in Western Guards is completely different from shooting in uh, the plains that yeah. is in and around Bangalore. So uh, the bird on the left is the same bird, uh, Shailakili. Okay. This was shot in Kork, mm -hmm. uh, close to Mandalpatti. Okay. Uh, this I think uh, took me about six hours after finding out the bird that the bird is there. After visually sighting the bird to make this photo, I, I think it took about six hours. Great so the bird on the right uh, is uh, Indian Robin. Mm -hmm. uh, this is from uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, mm -hmm. Kunur, there is a park called Sims Park. Mm -hmm. This is from there. So a couple of fly catchers, uh, brown dust fly catcher on the left. Mm -hmm. uh, white bellied blue fly catcher on the right. Okay. Uh, Rufus bellied tree pie. Uh, this again is a very difficult bird. Mm -hmm. uh, very difficult bird. Uh, when you when you're going through the forest, you you will definitely hear them. You you might see them fly around. Mm -hmm. But uh, to get shots like this, it's very hard. Uh, this is from a hide. Mm -hmm. Not shot in the open uh, forest. This is mm -hmm. from a hide in uh, Kerala. Okay. Uh, more birds from Western Guards. Uh, the bird on the left is uh, an Ilgiri wood pigeon. Mm -hmm. This again is from uh, uh, Sims Park. Mm -hmm. uh, the bird on the right is a blue uh, blue bearded uh, bee eater. eater. So th this is a very special bird. Uh, you don't see them often, uh, although this is not uh, uh, a guard special. Uh, mm -hmm. This is there uh, in the outskirts of Bangalore also, but mm -hmm. uh, more found in the guards. So uh, uh, this is a black and orange uh, flycatcher, mm -hmm. again from Sims Park. Yeah. <laughs> 
uh, yeah, this particular one is known for um, that uh, botanical garden, right? It's uh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. So, uh, water birds. Mm -hmm. uh, th this is a brown-headed gull, a uh, very old image. I think I can improve on this. <laughs> <laughs> there is space for improvement in, in no matter wherever you are, that phase of your life is in. <laughs> yes. So, uh, this is a Western reef egret. Uh, again, a very old image. Uh, I'm not sure which species of snake it is, but uh, it's trying to have a snake. <laughs> Great. Uh, this is uh, a crab plover. No, sorry. There's a noise to catch it. No, crab oh, plover. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm also confused. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's a crab plover. Okay. Uh, pied kingfisher. Yeah. Oh, king, kingfishers are uh, again uh, small, interesting birds. Uh, they sometimes allow you very close, sometimes uh, they don't. Uh, cute birds to look at, and uh, they're pretty fast. So, getting this was slightly challenging. This one uh, hovering is slightly easy, but this action definitely is tough. Yeah, yes. <laughs> this is just after it took a dip. I think it was a failed attempt. Yeah. So on the very left of the frame, you see that uh, disturbance in the water surface. That's where it uh, ah, okay. actually uh, entered the water. Okay. So, spoon build, sorry, uh, spot build ducks. Mm -hmm. Uh, these are uh, garganies. Garganies are uh, winter migrants, so I didn't uh, talk about migration earlier. Mm -hmm. So every year, every year, uh, Indian subcontinent uh, welcomes a lot of birds from uh, Central Europe, uh, Northern Europe, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just before these birds, these birds, uh, the mig uh, the birds that uh, reside in India during the winter, mm -hmm. there are a few passage migrants also, which stays here uh, for a few days and then continues on its journey. Okay. So this is one of the migrant uh, species. Mm -hmm. This again is from Kerala. This is a, a scaly breasted uh, rail. Yes. Uh, th this again is from the hide. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not seen this bird anywhere else. So I think I'm uh, seeing it, it was for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beauty. Oh, uh, this is common portrait. Uh, this is actually from uh, Rajasthan. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, very close to Jaipur, uh, there is a Sambar uh, Lake, uh, mm -hmm. India's largest uh, saltwater lake. Mm -hmm. Just next to that, uh, there's a small puddle of fresh water. Where, mm -hmm. uh, I was able to make this shot. So uh, the key to making all these water birds uh, look good is uh, you know, getting to their eye level. So, which is sometimes very challenging. Uh, mm -hmm. With all the equipment, it is very hard to uh, get down to their level. Mm -hmm. uh, but here, but in this uh, situation, uh, I was able to easily uh, just lie down next to the lake and uh, uh, make this image. Beautiful. Uh, this is a uh, common shell deck. Uh, this is shot from a boat mm -hmm. in uh, Gujarat, uh, Nalsa Road. Oh, great. So this is, uh, you know, shot against the morning light. Uh, mm -hmm. Just uh, as uh, sun was coming up, we shot this. So uh, this is uh, the same uh, bar-headed geese. The mm -hmm. Earlier I had shown a flying shot. Yeah. So you see uh, two black lines above its head. Yes. So that's why it's called uh, bar-headed geese. OK. So, uh, birds of prey, this are raptors, right? So, this, this is uh, a category of birds which is, uh, you know, captivating for everyone. Every, everyone wants to shoot uh, raptors. raptors. Uh, Bangalore is uh, blessed with uh, a lot of raptors. Uh, most of uh, them are uh, from Bangalore. So mm -hmm. This is a tawny eagle. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So, uh, Bonuli's eagle pair, uh, just okay. before nesting, it's uh, collecting nesting material. Okay. This is still when it's building its nest. Mm -hmm. This again is shot from a very uh, long distance with the 600 uh, teleconverter on a crop body. Okay. So you can see that the bird is the birds are not even looking at the camera. It, it yeah. is it has completely ignored my presence. That's great. So uh, this is a white-bellied uh, sea eagle. Mm -hmm. This again is an old image. I think uh, 15 or 16. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is shot off the coast of uh, Kundapur, uh, a town in uh, coastal town in Karnataka. Uh -huh. uh, so this has just caught a fish. It came down and sat on the pole. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, I mean I'm not sure why what made it fly. I think there is a snake on the on the pole. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe that is why it uh, took off again. Okay. This is a osprey again with a fish. Beautiful. Uh, this was shot uh, with a three hundred mm. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, in Kundapura, you have a boat uh, which on which you can, uh, you know, uh, go on a boarding ride. Okay. So, I, I saw this bird uh, dive into the water and get the fish. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to stand up on the boat. Oh my God. <laughs> as, this was, uh, as this was uh, coming towards us. Okay. Uh, if, if I had uh, sat down and shot, I wouldn't have got the green. I would have got the sky background. Yeah. So that, that height difference of uh, four, four to five feet gave me mm -hmm. a little bit of uh, green in the background. That's wonderful. So, I think uh, as photographers, uh, it, it's also important to see what our backgrounds are. Yeah. To, you know, to make more pleasing images. Yeah. Now, if I can you know, stop you for a minute, we have a question um, from Dr. M. K. M. Anand. Um, I think he, as he mentioned, he joined slightly late and uh, he uh -huh. wanted to ask, uh, would would you use on tripod monopod in in and uh, your gears? So gears, I think we mentioned, but we didn't talk anything yeah. about tripod or monopod. If you can just explain, that will be great. I, uh, I I I now have both a tripod and a monopod for the six hundred mm. Okay. Uh, I uh, if I'm walking around, I want to use the monopod. Mm -hmm. And if if I'm waiting in a place, I want to use the tripod. Okay. Uh, but I would if if I'm not uh, walking for a long uh, distance, I would do it handheld. Okay. Uh, that is because uh, monopod or tripod restricts your movement, and uh, sometimes we have to adjust two three inches, two three feet sometimes to get that background or yeah. to, to get that right profile. Yes. And uh, when when we are in an open field, maybe a grassland or a stock forest, mm -hmm. it is it is easy to do it with a monopod or a tripod. Mm -hmm. But if you are in the guards, if you are, if you are in a dense uh, forest, mm -hmm. it is very hard to it's very hard to move through the forest sometimes. Yeah. Yes. And with all this equipment, it, it makes it even harder. Yeah. So, so uh, I, I would uh, suggest, uh, or rather, I, I, I would prefer using monopod if I have to, but uh, mm -hmm. that's only if I have to. So, <laughs> yeah. Handheld is what I would uh, prefer. Yeah. But, uh, you know, for a longer period of time, if you are looking for something and again if you are going for a trekking or anything i i really don't think um, uh, you know so, hand uh, yeah what i do is uh, i put uh, you know put, put the monopod in my backpack mm -hmm. and uh, carry the lens on my shoulder okay. so on, while walking if there is anything i can quickly uh, pick up the camera and shoot 
okay but if if i'm waiting for something or if the bird is you know in, in inside a bush mm-hmm. and uh, it requires a very low shutter speed then uh, i use the monopod okay so mm-hmm. tripod is tripod is only used when i'm not going to move for sure okay uh, i'm going to wait in one particular location maybe for uh, you know the as for the shots yes. where I'm waiting for the right moment mm-hmm. I, i would use a uh tripod great um so i hope anand uh, you got the answer and uh, d5 and 600 mm is his main birding gear as of now right yes yeah yes so this is a tony eagle mm-hmm. uh tony eagles are uh, birds very interesting birds for bangalore uh, mm-hmm. we find them all around the year these mm-hmm. days it's uh, more and more hard to even see them uh, but uh, i any i reason? Uh, see sorry any reason why you are not able to see it it was common before and if you're not able to see it now i i think uh, habitat loss is the the main reason okay sad uh, a lot of places where they would frequent uh, now there are buildings there so it's mm. probably moving out out of bangalore uh, sightings of b- birds are more and more uh, you know increasing in fields uh, agriculture fields okay so uh, it's probably uh, and just like how uh, birds uh, uh, tigers leopards have their own territory right yeah so these birds of prey also have their own territories okay so, so for example the uh, bonlis uh, nest that i showed mm-hmm. right in front of that uh, nest there is a huge uh, lake which uh, mm-hmm. which is dry half the year and okay. there is no other raptor that that comes there because uh, bonli seagulls nest is there there is no other raptor that comes there okay interesting so uh montegos harrier uh, this again is a winter migrant it is here mm-hmm. from uh, uh, say end of uh, september to march mid march right. mm-hmm. this is the male uh, this is the female okay this is another image of uh, tony eagle mm-hmm. so uh these two birds are uh, i mean on the left it's tony eagle again uh, on the right mm-hmm. it is a short tailed snake eagle mm-hmm. these two birds are the birds that keeps every bird watcher in bangalore uh, you know looking for them yeah uh tony eagle and short tail snake eagle so you can see the nictating membrane uh, on the yes. uh, short tail snake eagle as it's gulping down a uh, snake you got you managed to get an image in the beginning or this is when you got into the yes, picture yes. yes no no i got to see the entire kill okay so so generally uh, these birds uh, you know sit on a tree or uh, hover and okay. uh, look over the grassland for uh, snakes mm-hmm. once they zero in on the snake they uh, dive in and catch the snake okay. so here you see this is the same sequence you see oh yeah, yeah i see the snake the uh, that the snake's head is caught in the talons of the bird yeah so uh, i was not able to reach there immediately i had mm-hmm. to take some time and uh, get closer to the bird mm mm-hmm. uh, and uh, i i didn't get where it's actually opening the wings to make it uh, you know uh, mm-hmm. so this is just after it has opened its wings and you can, you can see the tail of the snake uh, to yes. its yes yes so oh, this is uh, how it gulps down it, it's it, it's more or less like uh, you know how we pull noodles into our mouth <laughs> this, 
<laughs> don't tell me next time when i when we get some noodles this will be the first thing going to hit my head <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this happens in a few seconds after it is finished killing the snake this okay. happens in a few seconds and the bird takes off okay. so uh, this is a common question another uh, winter migrant uh, this bird i think uh, ev everyone in bangalore has shot this bird this was a very mm -hmm. very brave bird it allowed us very close to it uh, i was lucky enough uh, to make of a set of good images of this bird. Uh, this is actually uh, uh, as close as I was. Uh, I have not cropped this image. Wonderful. So, it, because uh, you know how the bird reacts, what its behavior is, mm -hmm. uh, we can actually approach the bird and approach uh, or rather position ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, in a way that we, we make better images. So yeah. this uh, went and uh, went, uh, I think it, it was trying to catch uh, a grasshopper. And mm -hmm. I was, uh, we knew that it would come back to the same perch. Okay. So we positioned ourselves so that, you know, when it turns back and flies back to its perch, we would mm -hmm. get some shots. So this okay. is one of them. Okay. This is when it was coming towards us. From the perch, no. it is moving towards towards us. Mm -hmm. So all of this is when you, you, you are not disturbing the bird. So the yes. main thing to do is not disturb the bird. Yeah. Approach uh, the bird in a way that you don't disturb and be at a distance that the bird is comfortable at. Yes. So this is when it's coming back to the perch. Okay. It's beautiful. So this is a juvenile uh, peregrine falcon. This is again from uh, Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. uh, it has just killed a lapwing. Oh. And uh, so there uh, we were in a car and oh. I wanted to get I-11. So oh. I slowly op opened the door, came down. And as I came down, the bird is looking at me. Oh, okay. So it, it's like uh, it, it looked at me for a second and then continued eating. So that was oh. a, a wonderful thing. That's great. This is a uh, red necked falcon again. Uh, this is, I think, uh, the image that you used for the background. Yeah. So, uh, this again is, uh, the, the, uh, we made images of this bird for uh, three, four days. And okay. uh, that was possible because we knew where the bird is and we knew uh, what the bird is doing there. Mm -hmm. So let me show you a couple more pictures. Okay. It's a beautiful bird. So, it's flying, it's it's sitting, it's flying. Wow. I wish I could focus a lot better. Yeah. This is this is what it was actually doing there. You oh, see okay. it fly. Yes. So these are the rain flies. Yes. Uh, the, uh, these birds, mo most of these raptors are uh, very fond of this uh, fly. Wow. Okay. So th this uh, this this particular location, uh, these uh, flies were coming out of the ground, uh -huh. and this uh, juvenile uh, red neck falcon had a feast for almost a week, <laughs> and thereby gave us opportunity to sh shoot this bird. That's great. So you can, uh, I think you wow. can see the wings in its in these two pictures. Yeah. This is uh, uh, Eurasian Sparrowhawk, mm -hmm. uh, very, very, very difficult bird to me at least. Okay. Uh, so uh, I sighted this bird sometime in uh, November of 2020. Okay. And I was only able to make 
a decent frame like this in march of 2021 of the same word <laughs> oh, okay yes. so this is uh, i think uh, uh, when i got this image and a few days later this moved back to europe mm-hmm. it, it felt like this bird rewarded me for all my efforts <laughs> I'm sure uh, you know that that is the idea behind it. The moment you took, you are ready to take one step closer to nature. Nature always keeps some surprises for you. Yeah. So, uh, so the this bird is uh, uh, you know it looks very similar to a shikra. Yeah. Uh, the, it's yeah. the same family. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, what this bird does is it flies very close to the ground. okay and it changes its direction mid flight so it's very hard to track the bird oh. and uh, generally this bird is out when it's foggy you know early yeah. mornings uh, before uh, you know the sun rises up so oh. 6:30 7 is when this bird is active uh-huh. so uh, uh, i think uh, i have seen this bird almost 15 20 times during this period uh, mm-hmm. tried tracking it tracked it for 100 meters or so and then lost to this bird so, uh, okay l- lucky luckily on this day uh, there was not much of tracking involved uh, it just flew right in front of us and sat on this perch okay. we had to move ar- move around a little to you know uh, get the right angles and the light mm-hmm. And it gave us four or five shots, and then it took off. So hardly about one second of shooting, and it took off. So, but very rewarding. Uh, uh, these uh, two, uh, four or five photos that we have is very rewarding. That's great. So this is a, a marlin with a, a little swift kill. Okay. So. Merlin's behavior is very similar to that of sparrow hawk the hunting by style when it is active all of that this mm-hmm. this image is from uh, lrk uh, later oh. on uh, our, our guide there is the reason for the shot uh, uh, so uh, this bird uh, basically uh, uh, flings and you know pulls the bird out of the sky so yeah. it doesn't chase a bird it just uh, you know flings and pulls it out oh so we saw a couple of uh, failed attempts and mm-hmm. uh, then we thought the bird has uh, moved on mm-hmm. uh, somehow our guide sighted uh, this bird perched and as okay. we approached we saw that uh, it is sitting there with the kill okay um yeah we so have one we, more question like yeah yes please No, no no you can finish it and then i can go ahead uh, so we witnessed the entire kill uh, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, that 20 25 minutes of uh, you know being with this bird was re- really a great experience i'm sure it was i mean it's a natural history moment so it's definitely always exciting <laughs> yes yeah uh, so dr anand again got one more question um what mode normally you use do you use auto iso uh yes i started using auto iso uh, very recently mm-hmm. and uh, in manual mode so i uh, only have to now worry about the shutter speed based on the situation the iso and aperture are uh, uh, you know changed once uh, something changes in the environment maybe the light maybe the direction i'm shooting with uh, mm-hmm. so for example in this shot uh, unless and until the bird uh, is going to fly or you know we are changing directions i only had to concentrate on the shutter speed that i needed here mm-hmm. uh, i shot this with a d5 which is uh, a full frame camera mm-hmm. and uh, the noise performance of the d5 is very good mm-hmm. so up up to 6400 iso i have no problems with noise so mm-hmm. i have locked the auto iso to 8000 iso mm-hmm. so it doesn't go above 8000 mm-hmm. 
but if if you are shooting with a crop body i would suggest uh, i mean i am very particular about the noise so i wouldn't go above 1600 iso mm-hmm. on a crop body so i would i compromise on the shutter or the aperture and uh, you know keep the iso at a lower uh, level okay so if you're using um, a higher end camera uh, depending on your camera but if it is a d5 then you suggest 8000 yes as a cap yeah i cap my exposures at 8000 yes okay thank you my hope anand uh, it's clear now we have pavan kumar asking if do you have any suggestions for beginners uh, start going out uh, explore uh, your uh, surroundings and start shooting i mean That's the more practice the better you become yes yes the more you shoot the better you become yeah. yes that you can trust me i think we done with the questions now so uh, this i wanted to keep for the last uh, okay. this is another word that uh, i i just saw this recently uh, i've been tracking this word for a very long time like is hockey game this was shot in munnar okay uh leghe hockey eagle is a very rare bird it's only mm-hmm. found in uh, the western ghats okay uh, i i had sighted this bird a, a few times earlier but uh, i hadn't got a shot like this mm-hmm. so uh, munar was not even part of the trip it was okay. uh, you know uh, decided at the last minute okay and, uh, i think uh, that decision no <laughs> uh, if we had not done that i mean i we would have regretted it <laughs> everything happened for uh, a reason <laughs> yes yes absolutely um i mean this just looking at this bird it's putting a big smile on my face again <laughs> Yeah, after after uh, year after, I mean after years of uh, wanting to see this bird, we saw this bird, and it was a it was a very good sighting. Yeah. This again is not cropped, mm-hmm. uh, full yeah. frame six hundred mm, no crop. Uh, right next to the road, twenty uh, five plus minutes of sighting. Oh my God, that's <laughs> like a treat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this was on January second, Munar. Uh, New Year treat, in fact. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, in a way, the, this uh, started off my year with a bang. Um, I mean, probably so another bird like this only can uh, top this. Nothing else can top this as of now. I agree. So, as a bird photographer, uh, it's not just about birds. We do get to see animals, and uh, uh, grasslands are uh, places where uh, there are a lot of animals. Uh, mm-hmm. bla- uh, black box, uh, there is chinkara, there is uh, uh, a lot of uh, not just mammals, but uh, you know, uh, reptiles, uh, snakes, lizards. Okay. So, there's a small collection of those. That's great. Uh, this this uh, black buck. Mm-hmm. Uh, elephant uh, from one of the jungle trips. Beautiful they are. Uh, this is an Indian fox. Okay. This is again from the central Karnataka. You, you see these small rocks, right? The, yes. So a lot of uh, places in central Karnataka has this small rocks there. Okay. So it, it kinds of add, adds to the uh, environment there, uh, the uh-huh. habitat. Okay. So uh, I mean, it, it's kind of interesting as to who kept those stones there. So. <laughs> <laughs> and and there are thousands of these stones. It's not not and not just one. Uh, okay. Uh, this is a leopard uh, a recent trip to rajasthan jalana okay so thank you all no yeah, uh, that, that was a wonderful presentation so thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> really really yeah, interesting um, so we have one more question from dr one of one for both of you have you tried z9 have you tried 
No, I haven't got a chance yet, uh, but I would like to try it someday. <laughs> I I'm I'm sorry doctor I think Hermes tried um but unfortunately he couldn't make it today uh, I I'll definitely ask him to give you a bus and uh, he loved it and uh, he think it's really amazing I haven't got a chance uh, the moment I moved from Dubai you know getting this new gears are becoming a dream for me uh, but yes uh, uh, what I heard from the people who are using C9 is very very positive um any then we have cynthia uh sorry chaitanya uh any good places to support wild church not far from south probably asking this just to start with vultures uh, uh, we have uh, uh, red-headed vultures in kabini mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, uh, indian vultures mm -hmm. in uh, kabini and uh, bandipur okay uh, i would say most of uh, you know the tiger reserves ha have these vultures uh, uh, egyptian vulture is uh, there all across uh, okay. south india uh -huh. their numbers are very few so chance of sighting them is uh, I mean, it's just uh, luck but uh -huh. if, if you keep frequenting these places one or the other day you will definitely uh, sight them uh, we have a follow-up question, same from Chaitanya. Um, so, what's the best season to spot vultures? Any, Sorry? Is there any specific season to spot vultures? Uh, in South India? Yes. It's a follow-up uh, question. Okay, yeah. okay. So, uh, not really. I mean, uh, these birds are there. All, uh, I mean, these are resident birds, so they're there all around the year. Okay. But, uh, if you want to see see vultures, there are uh, you know uh, cattle dumps uh, where they dump dead cattle mm -hmm. in Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. uh, Bikaner to be precise. Uh, mm -hmm. There you will see thousands of them, but mm -hmm. uh, it it's not a good sight there. So, got it. Got it. Um, uh, Vishwanath, I am not sure whether um, Skanda can answer this. The question is focusing on tigers, specifically on Bandipur. Um, what's the best time to sport tigers? You have any clue? Um, summer, I guess. Summer, yeah. Uh, summer is when uh, you know all the leaves are uh, down. Uh, yeah. the, the forest is in. It, it the forest is thinner in uh, uh, the summer and chances of uh, seeing Tabak. these wild animals uh, to the uh, they come out to the water hole so the chances yeah. of seeing them are higher Hi. yeah i think i i, I visited bandipur a couple of times and i think i've seen tigers only once and uh, yeah you you need to spend a couple of uh, it depends on your luck and uh, so yes. far what i heard is Summer is summer is great. Yes. So uh, I have not. I'm not. Uh, you know, a tiger person. But uh, in my few attempts, I come to the conclusion that the tiger or the leopard decides whether uh, yeah. you should see it or not. So <laughs> no, I um see when it comes to tigers, I was so far quite lucky. Um, in uh, not not in Kabini, but Bandipur once, uh, and then. Um, mainly in the northern side of India, Tadoba and uh, yes. Tadoba was really lucky for me. Then from Kerala, uh, okay, sighting a tiger in Kerala is like a dream. <laughs> it it was, and can you believe I was doing my trekking and I was a part oh. of a project and I got it, got the sighting of four tigers in one single frame between it trekking for almost three, three and a half hours <laughs> that was uh, that was that was a day <laughs> yeah and then we should not we have one more question from him recently took a drive through bandipur to uti via masnagudi it was just a pass and i wish to do a jungle stay uh, okay, so good luck with uh, that, Vishwanath. I mean, um, I have seen this in Param, you know, uh, Hanakil Wild area of uh, 
a parambikulam reserve so that was that was an amazing trip i mean it it was not a one or two day thing it was a two to four months project in fact we started with two months and it went up to six months and uh, um every day we look for one of the other species and we have seen the oh, pug marks seen the droppings and heard the sound but the sighting happened on the last day uh, but when it happened it was four of them a mother with uh, three sub adults uh, together for three and a half hours between trucking we started spo we spotted them maybe 500 meters away we went as close as uh, around 200 meters have seen a tiger climbing it we almost 10 feet high and going down so that was my experience and which i will i don't think i'll ever forget <laughs> And um, Chaitanya, uh, have you been uh, to Ullap? Ullap? What, what is it? Uppalapadu in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't, I haven't is, heard. Is it, it. Uh, by any chance Rollapadu? No, Uppalapadu. U P P A L A P A D U. Uppalapadu. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, so <laughs> then uh, we have uh, a marvelous a comment from uh, Dr. Anand saying marvelous. Then uh, Gaurish Kapani, thank you for this wonderful session, Skanda. Uh, then, <laughs> then Vaan Shri again mentioned excellent Skanda. Hearty congratulations. Very proud of you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Then uh, Rolapadu is also uh, Rolapadu also has a bird sanctuary and it is known for uh, black bugs. Upalapadu seems yes. to be most underrated bird sanctuary. I haven't visited the place yet. So yeah, I think yes, uh, Rolapadu is a great Indian bustard sanctuary. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a protected area for uh, bustards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I have one image which I missed in the presentation. Uh, it's a lesser florican from Rolapadu. Okay. Uh, it's it's uh, doing its display. It's jumping up in the air, trying to you know attract the female. That's right. Mm, then Mahesh mentioned it's superb. Radha Krishnan said great, and um, oh Radha Krishnan, you know. Our conservation head is a scientist. His name is Peter Hudson, and uh, he used he keep on doing sessions for us. The scientist with uh, photography as a passion. So when he talk about subjects, he have so, such big deep knowledge about the subject. As as you know, when it comes to a science perspective, along with uh, photography. So he was uh, suggesting us to get him once again to board with a new okay. topic. Then Pavan Kumar said, uh, beautiful, I mean, wow, uh, I cannot understand what is the, another language. Um, it looks like Hindi, but it, I, I'm not sure what is the name. Beautiful photo. Um, then then, uh, then, a couple of hellos and uh, things. I don't think we have anything more, but it was really an interesting presentation, great images, and uh, thank you for sharing your stories. And do you have any tips for upcoming photographers uh, tips as in uh, I would say uh, understand your subjects first mm -hmm. uh, if you are uh, going to a particular location mm -hmm. try and do your research understand what birds are there what, what other wildlife is there mm -hmm. uh, try to get uh, an understanding of uh, what what the be, uh, behavior is of the the, of the birds that are there mm -hmm. uh, th that will help you vastly in uh, you know approaching your subject once you're there okay. Okay. also you have to understand what gear you have what what lens what camera what is its limitation uh, how much can you push it to so once you know what gear you have and what uh, the sub what the subject is there Mm -hmm. and how it behaves mm -hmm. so the chances of making your image is higher mm -hmm. uh, it just because you're there 
just because the bird is there doesn't mean that you 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 get to uh, shoot or you you get to make a beautiful picture there. Mm-hmm. So all of this uh, this uh, knowledge, uh, know, know, uh, your equipment, uh, the location, all of this put together gives you that opportunity, and you have to make the most of that opportunity to get the uh, photograph that you can. We spoke about uh, tripod, monopod, uh, your camera, your lenses. How about uh, the cards? I mean, uh, the memory cards. The memory cards, yes. Uh, so when I started with the D500, a 4GB mm-hmm. card was more than sufficient. <laughs> uh, yeah. Today, I think I have 350, 400GB of cards. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, sometimes it's a challenge just to understand which card is full, which card is empty, which card you can use. Uh, but also, uh, sometimes it is required. I mean, uh, uh, some action needs, uh, for, uh, for example, uh, uh, the Redneck Falcon flying. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a slide where the Redneck Falcon was flying in. Yeah, the wings open. So I had to shoot about eight or nine photos within that one second to get that uh, that perfect wing position. Yeah. So when you when you are shooting uh, eight or nine frames, you want those images to transfer to your card quickly so that you can continue shooting if that action continues. Yes. Thereby giving you a better chance of making better images. So yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, it also depends on the, your shooting style. If you don't shoot action, if you're just shooting a bird that is perched, then then any card will do. Yeah. You don't need a high, high speed card, uh, which is again expensive. Yes. You, you can, you can uh, I mean, based on your shooting techniques, you can uh, decide on which card you need. Yeah, that, that that was the intention. That was the reason I asked as well, because especially when it comes to birds and birds in action and um, the kind of gears what these days we all are using, I think um, it always helps if you're using the right, you know, cards and with uh, high performance that is. Otherwise, so you know, if there's a also, buffer. Then... Correct. So with this, there is also the, I mean, there is also a downside to shooting all this. Uh, yes. We need one photograph. We end up shooting hundreds, <laughs> and then you have to sit and go through all of them. Oh my god! So, yeah, you you would just end up the you know come back from the trip, dump all the photos in your hard disk, go yes. to another trip, dump, come back, dump again. So that also yeah. becomes an endless cycle. So um, we have to. Yeah. Um, shoot only when we need to shoot so that is also something we have to learn again we need to learn to delete uh, even though i'm saying yes. this it's really a process you know you come back you go through the images maybe i don't think even any of us are using at least not even 10 percentage of the images what we have stored in our hard disk uh, okay. you you may shoot thousand pictures you may be using maximum two images from that so i mean uh, i have a similar problem so uh, sometimes i'm very particular i i, I might have shot uh, say 500 600 shots i only end up processing one image and uh, that image uh, uh, come out, uh, gets transferred to my phone and then to Instagram. Or, uh, uh, but the rest is always sitting there in the hard disk. So. Yeah. This deleting is a process. But guys, if you guys are starting or if it's for all of us, we need to, you know, it's high time we try to reduce this electronic junk and uh, make some space. Um, then, yeah, there is one more question from Chaitanya. Uh, give some suggestions to sport uh, a sport house, please. The sport house, please. Uh, to spot owls, okay. Uh, you should uh, learn and understand what their calls are. How how what the what their call sounds like, mm-hmm. and uh, explore areas where you think there may be owls. Mm. which uh, look like uh, 
uh, you know, places where owls are there. Uh, for example, a densely wooded area may have a uh, uh, brown red owl in, in the western bats and here uh, uh, bottled red owls. Uh, slightly less uh, wooded areas will have spotted owls. Uh, so out slightly outside the city, you can have jungle owlets, you can have uh, uh, scope sounds in the environment of rain. So you just have to uh, explore more, keep your ears open, listen to the calls. So that is how you can uh, look for owls. Or you can ask someone to show, show you the bird. But uh, these days, I don't think anyone would do that because uh, if one person uh, shoots and uh, you know, shares that location. Uh, a lot of other people ask for that, and then the, uh, there's a big crowd there, and the bird gets disturbed. So mm -hmm. these days, uh, I don't think uh, many people share locations, which is again good for the bird, not so good for the photographers, but they are still okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the ethics play a major role over here. You know, there are photographers who do definitely give 100% attention uh, to the subject and its safety. And there are photographers who go way beyond absolutely no ethics, just the photo, you know, yes. just the photo. So it's something which you need to define where you stand and uh, whom you are sharing the details. So I totally understand the pros and cons. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, Ravi Shankar have a message, uh, I mean, a um, question, do you take bird videos? Uh, I, I do, uh, but very few, uh, very few videos that I have shot. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly because I'm concentrating on what the bird is going to do next, rather than uh, you know, shooting the video. If I'm sure that the bird is not going to do anything else for at least the next 30 seconds or so, I do make a small 30 second clip. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I'm I'm trying to get a more grip on the video part, but it's still in the you know learning trial and error stage. But I enjoy it. Uh, Chaitanya was talking about it's been just a month, and I agree that deleting part uh, it takes as much time as scouting the part. So my dear, welcome to the club. It's going to be a process. I think it is way harder than sporting the birds. Yes. <laughs> I would uh, suggest uh, don't delete them in the field. Yes. Come back home. Come back home or uh, wherever you are. Come back to the place where you rest. Come back there before transferring the photos to your uh, can, uh, laptop or hard disk. Delete them right in the camera, so that uh, I mean the deleting process in the camera is faster than uh, reviewing them on the laptop and then deleting them. I I have a small suggestion in that uh, because you know uh -huh. sometimes when you check it in the camera the display can be quite challenging because it's small uh, yes. i know it is going to be a little more painful when you are checking it in the laptop uh, when you put it in 100 percent when you see the clarity when you, certain images you may feel that it is proper in focus and uh, you may end up in disappointing yourself when you are checking it in, in laptop and seeing the actual contrast and uh, clarity. I know, I totally do understand, Skanda, your point, but uh, if it is me, uh, I will. What I, I was going to add, that is your first round of uh, elimination. <laughs> yes. when you come to your laptop. So the <laughs> second round of elimination on the laptop is yeah. Of a much lesser quantity, so you don't spend uh, much time looking at uh, the photos that you have shot. Yeah, the complete, you know, you you definitely will have different level of uh, quality if it, if you're very sure that this is not something which you want to use it. Yes, yes. And if you have a bird sitting on a perch doing nothing but just looking, and if you have a uh, hundred images of that, definitely keep five and delete all the rest from the camera itself and then you can look for the details but other than that if it is action or anything like that anything specific uh, but check it in your laptop uh, see the details if possible if it is an important one make sure that you are checking it uh, exp you know putting it in the actual size and checking it as well so yes. you can be very sure that you are selecting the right image 
So yeah. just to add to this, uh, after the leggy sock eagle sighting, I I had two copies of it <laughs> on two different hard disks. No, that's required. That's required because we have friends and we have guests who travel with us. We always suggest when we do workshop, we always suggest to keep two hard disk and the two keep two copies. And at least whatever you know, if you are thinking about the number of hard disk we all have. what i am trying to do at least these days selecting the some there are you know wall photos will have one or the other stories but you have some close to moment hearts very special ones so after every trip you if you have a highlighted 10 images or five images take a copy of that and keep it in two or three different hard disk just to be on the safe side so i am also a victim to this i have lost uh, about 5 years of data <laughs> the raw the raw files are gone so oh, that the in initial five years so i'm sure i will be able to get all of them back <sighs> yeah but that gear now so <laughs> another reason to go back and shoot yeah it's hard and again that is one thing you need to think about while you are shooting when you're using your cards as well and if it is like a long day you are shooting back to back and i had a very bitter experience i was keeping couple of cards in my camera i mean in my hand and when one card got over i put the second one and it, it, before that i finished one card but my mistake i deleted i formatted the card which got images from the same day oh. and i deleted And the whole interaction between a cheetah and a cub, and I was—I'm not denying I was in tears. <laughs> I didn't know what to do, but thankfully there was a software professional uh, as my guest on that day. Then uh, he suggested me a software, and um, managed to recover it. But you know that stress in those few couple of hours—that was really yes. painful. <laughs> i think uh, also the uh, key uh, thing to do in such situation is not to write anything onto the card yeah you want uh, just in your know, this is for the rest of the people uh, even if you format your card yeah. there is a good chance with the present day software to recover them so yeah i three... have not had uh, uh, this personally but i was able to recover a few files for a few Okay. In That's, case it happens, hmm. leave that card aside. Leave it till you come back, and you are able to recover the card. I think if you use it twice or thrice, up to three formats, they can recover the files. Um, beyond that, it is not possible. That's what I remember. But this happened way back, so I'm sure there are more possibilities these days. That time, it was like uh, you know three formats. and then we have more questions any specific color birds where your camera you know, struggled in autofocus uh, even after a few points a decent enough a decent enough uh, but image ultimately turning out smooth uh, i'm uh, i have not experienced a uh, thing like that uh, with respect to color but uh, uh you you get smoother uh, you know details with harsh light you get uh, smoother uh, details if the lens and the camera is not aligned properly so a few technical things uh, you need to check if uh, you are not getting sharp in this but i don't think uh, colors for sharpness i mean colors and sharpness are uh, sharpness mm -hmm. of focus I and mean, it is not correct but uh, i have seen that uh, some red colors tend to oversaturate yeah uh, for example the red linea uh, sometimes if you shoot a red uh, rose or uh, linea uh, the colors don't come out the way they are supposed to this also brings out another uh, key thing to photography the post processing right so i i feel uh, 60% of your images uh, shooting it shooting it right in the field uh, 
uh, all the settings correct everything the exposure correct everything right mm-hmm. in the camera and then bringing that to a presentable photo is the next 40% mm. so 40% doesn't mean you do a lot of things but you do few things like adjust the contrast the colors uh, but do it right right i'm still learning uh, i'm not an expert right? uh, post processing is very key very key to getting uh, rather producing better images yeah and when it comes to um, colors what i experienced is you know white on white background can be a bit tricky and white and light also can be really tricky so when i am doing white on white uh, and if the light is harsh then i try to underexpose slightly to get the you know to avoid blowing out and uh, to get more details and right. when it comes to black i try to overexpose it slightly so that you can get more details of the subject so this is when it comes to colors and you know again um, climate conditions definitely play a major role when it is harsh light and if there is haze in the uh, surroundings and then no matter whatever you do the images will be blur so climate matters uh, the wind direction matters uh, the way you hold your camera matters colors matters but everything to some extent got solutions as well haze yeah it is a problem Uh, other than that yes most of the things you certain if, even if you're going to give a little bit more support to your camera the way you are holding it keeping it closer to your chest and resting it on your belly uh, keeping you up the way you breathe uh, controlling your breathe all these things can help uh, uh, depending on the color and the light you just need to understand where to focus what to focus in them. if if it is same color background and same color species then try to see where you can find some contrast be it on the border or on the eyes or on the beak wherever you can find some contrast that will help you to get the focus faster uh then there is one more question or or suggestion from chaitanya you all must know already but keep using aws s3 for storage and backup just men- mentioning it because you said you lost a huge dam yeah this uh, happened uh, five, almost 5 uh, 6 years ago so <laughs> aws was not something i could afford then <laughs> uh, i still don't have much idea about this uh, but i'm definitely thinking about uh, you know uh, on a long term basis to get a second or third level backup option so i'll definitely check it thank you chaitanya uh then win win said hello so that i think that is all for the end um nothing more from our side but uh, from questions from uh, the viewers uh, i personally from on behalf of postrails and on behalf of all the viewers who were here and who is going to watch it later would like to thank you skanda it was really a beautiful session loved your images and you're very cool and you did it so well and so really really appreciate your support uh, thank and you anyway. so much uh, thank you for uh, recognizing me and uh, giving me this opportunity <laughs> you know and if you have any suggestions for some other people like you as passionate as you be it on birds or mammals or anything do suggest it to us so that we can get in touch sure. with them the idea over here is to you know we life is very very short so whatever we are learning in this short span if we can share it to few other people and uh, if that is going to influence at least one person to get slightly closer to nature that's beautiful right absolutely yeah so thank you um, thank you all for being here uh, and let's catch up with uh, another uh, beautiful session and um, uh, i i'm not sure about what is the next date and who's the next person but we will definitely keep you all posted um, so covid is still hanging around so please yes. stay safe and take care uh, we have one more message from heman good talks kanta nisha so thank you heman
<laughs> so that's from our side and thank you all see you all stay safe